R slash credit. What became known as the incident in your family. We used to have a wood stove in the middle of our living room to heat the whole house. The thing is, my little brother was obsessed with it. Whenever my dad would go to start the fire or put in more wood my brother would sprint out of his room to try to help which means he was trying to pull everything out when it was already on fire. One day my sister and I were fighting over something and I smacked her in the face with my Barbie Pegasus toy. She starts screaming asterisk 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 murder because there is literal blood spewing out of her nose which prompts my mom who was putting more wood on the fire to abandon the stove while it was still open. My budding arsonist of a brother saw his chance and began ripping out the paper and the kindling that she'd just put in. So the carpet is on fire. My little brother is screaming because he burned his hands. I'm crying because I think I've killed my sister. My sister has p asterisk 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 ed out on the floor covered in blood and my mom is ready to kill all of us. The burn mark on the carpet stayed until we replaced it 5 years later. My brother is no longer an arsonist and my sister's broken nose healed up fine. Edit. Forgot to mention that my mom put out the fire by stomping on it while wearing flip flops. So there was some melted flip flop residue stuck to the carpet forever as well. There are a few in my family but I'll share one that always makes me laugh. My brother was 4 years old in 1984 and was a big fan of He-Man, a character that had an animated series at the time. At church one Sunday, he was sitting quietly in the pew next to my mom and dad. An older man from the church got up to lead the congregation in a prayer. This particular old man was known for his lengthy purple prose when it came to praying, especially when he had a good sized audience. He got started, saying God, our father, of endless power and dominion, author of our faith, master of the universe. At this, my brother leapt up and yelled he man is the master of the universe. My mom, mortified, quickly grabbed him and pulled him into her lap. E-M-B-A-R, R asterisk 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 E-D. She said she peeked up and she could see everyone's shoulders shaking. The entire church was silently cracking up. When he was about 5 or 6, my cousin got a sled for Christmas. He was all excited and wanted to use it right away, but my uncle told him he had to wait and you sit outside later. My cousin didn't listen and immediately took the sled up to the top of this staircase that sat facing the front door of the house, then proceeded to try and sled down the stairs. He ended up flying off the sled and smacking face first against the door. That was almost 30 years ago, years before I was even born. He still hasn't lived it down. Same cousin supposedly ran headfirst into my mom's sliding GL asterisk 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 door once while trying to let a dog out and got knocked on his asterisk asterisk asterisk. Also a story he has yet to live down. When I was in high school, my family and I used to drive across Texas to see family every summer. One year, we stayed in a asterisk 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 ty motel in Big Spring off of I-20. We were all in the motel for the first night, and I was using the bathroom. When I stepped out, I saw my dad washing his hands, and my brother getting ready to throw something at the back of my dad's head. My reflexes kicked in, and I caught the thing my brother threw before it hit my dad's head. It happened so fast, that I didn't know what was thrown, until I felt it in my hand. Apparently my dad found an open single-use lube packet left from the previous occupants next to the bed and threw it at my brother, who proceeded to try to throw it back at my dad's head while he was washing the lube off his hands until I intercepted it. The packet exploded in my hand and once I realized what it was, I threw it out of my hand where it proceeded to hit my mom who was sitting on the bed in the face. It's like a little family bonding story that we tell no one. The first time my mom spent Christmas with my dad's family, who are a bunch of loud and lovable nerds who drink a lot of strawberry daiquiris, she wanted to make a good first impression. So she started up what she thought would be a fun discussion. If you row to the middle of a lake with a bowling ball in your boat, and then you throw the bowling ball overboard, does the water level of the lake rise, fall, or stay the same? The family barely survived the fiasco that followed. 
It started out simple enough, with people asterisk 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 rtiNG their view with some degree of civility and humanity. Variations were proposed. What if the bell was wrapped in styrofoam? What if the bell had a hole in it and filled with water as it sank? What if it was a beach ball? But pretty soon the lines were drawn. The trenches dug and everyone's competitive spirit took over. It got more heated. Tempers flared. More strawberry dikeras were consumed. Words were said that still sting 27 years later. Everyone was arguing their side, bent on victory and glory. It purportedly ended when my grandpa, a stay the same a threw a pork chop at my dad, who was himself a dirty rotten waterfaller. I still don't know what the right answer is. We were just finishing our meal at a restaurant and got up to leave. One of my siblings wanted to make a dash to be the first one to the car, so she ran ahead of us. This restaurant had a place to pay in the front, and there was a decent sized line formed there. The last person in line was a fairly large sized woman and her son. As my sister squeezed past her and the wall, the woman stepped backward and pinned her against the wall. My sister tried to squirm free as the son of the lady screamed M.A. M.A. There's a girl behind ya. I was crying I was laughing so hard. The time I ruined Christmas. I was in college and went on a complete bender a few days before Christmas. Landed back to my house on Christmas Eve and lifted a pile of beer and said my goodbyes. I was carried home unconscious later that night slash early hours of Christmas morning. I wasn't able to sit for the meal the next day and spent my Christmas in bed. It was a low moment. My siblings always remind me of the time I ruined Christmas. I've learned a lot from then and I've thankfully matured. My cousin ran through a sliding GL asterisk 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 door when it was closed. I just remember a loud crash and then he was screaming and there was blood and broken GL asterisk 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 everywhere. It was pretty crazy. He was okay after getting a load of stitches at the hospital. After that everyone thought it was pretty funny and it's been an ongoing family joke that they put a strip of masking tape on the GL asterisk 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 door so he can see it's closed when he's visiting. I was a couple weeks old and some extended family was meeting me for the first time. My cousin was sick but my aunt and uncle brought her anyways. She was leaning over my crib when my mom asked her to back up, which then caused a small argument between my mom and aunt. While they were arguing my cousin proceeded to sneeze in my face. I got RSV shortly after and had to be taken by ambulance to the hospital. I was in the NICU and things weren't looking great, so the doctors told my parents to prepare for the worst. My heart ended up stopping at one point, and I suppose you could say I died momentarily. My cousin killing me caused a huge family fight that luckily has since been put to rest. However, under no circumstances am I allowed to bring this up at any family events, and I find that completely unfair. I went to asterisk 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 and back for that right. One of my sons had RSV at just over 2 months old. My father-in-law was holding him and he just stopped breathing, which is terrifying enough, but on top of that he had been preemie, 29 weeks, and had been on ventilator just 5 weeks before. Poor little thing had it, before he should even have been born. He looked so tiny, and it was touch, and go for a little bit. Not our best Christmas, happened boxing day. To see the nearly 6 ft 17 year old wannabe rock star now you'd never know. Sometimes when things are going asterisk 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 and I'm complaining about my bad luck, I remind myself we had the good luck when we really needed it. Aunt forgot to turn in the oven at Thanksgiving. She was newly married to my uncle and my grandma didn't like her, so it was probably nerves. She didn't cook again for holidays until after my grandma died. Okay what I don't get with these forgot to turn the oven on stories. Do these people not baste the bird while it's cooking? And nobody ever notices that there's no smell of a cooking bird after like an hour. Nobody notices the kitchen isn't hot. Nobody notices the oven isn't hot when they open it too. But the bird in? This is really everyone's fault. Not just the person who didn't turn the oven on. I actually did it once. 
I have two ovens and turned on the wrong one and noticed it because there was no smell which is my favorite part of Thanksgiving. I cook turkey for the smell. Luckily my in-laws are always late anyway, so it was fine. I'm betting my grandmother probably realized it wasn't on and said nothing because she hated my aunt. There was only one woman good enough for her oldest son, and unfortunately for my grandmother, that woman married my dad instead my paternal grandmother loved my mother and my father was her least favorite child. <laughs> my two older sisters got in a huge fight once while me, my dad, and stepmom were out. The fight climaxed when one of them threw a football sized decorative wooden turtle at the other. She either missed, or my other sister ducked, and the turtle flew in too, and broke a window. After that happened they decided they'd get in less trouble if they said they were playing turtle ball rather than fighting. Me and my parents actually bought it, and we didn't learn the truth until a few years later. Jeez. I knew a girl that broke a window because she was locked out and wanted to get inside the house. She then called the police and said there was a break-in because she didn't want to get in trouble. I was locked outside and was banging on the door and broke a window with my hand, slicing it. It was a mistake because I was so hysterical, I wasn't trying to break in. Boy was dad mad when I woke him up. He found a broken window and the door was unlocked. My sisters who'd locked me out had unlocked it about 5 minutes after I'd given up trying the door. We go every year on a fishing trip to a remote lake village. My second uncle decided it would be a good idea to do a fireworks show, so he purchased a bunch of fireworks from the only store in town, and he set them out on the beach for the show. Only problem was they weren't stuck into the sand very well, and they tipped over during the show and fired at the audience. No one got hurt, but a lot of people were mad at him after that. Similar thing happened at New Year's back in 2012, when we were in a small village near the coast and our neighbor, not a local, he had a summer house there, decided to light some fireworks in a small box. The box tipped over, and me, my parents and my neighbors had to jump and flail all around to avoid tiny rockets flying across the yard. One flew into the house, exploded, and set the sack of potatoes on fire. We only had one bathroom in my house growing up. One day someone was using the bathroom and my little brother, toddler age, really had to go. He finally couldn't wait anymore and ended up taking a asterisk 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 on the floor outside the bathroom. A second later my sister came walking down the hall, didn't see the asterisk 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 and stepped in it. She screamed and shook it off her foot, and as soon as she stepped away, the dog came running and ate the asterisk asterisk asterisk. I saw it all happen in the span of a minute. It still gets brought up to this day. <laughs> Me, my husband and stepdaughter were having lunch with a friend of ours and his daughter at a certain Wisconsin themed fast food chain. My husband thought he had to asterisk 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 and just let it rip right there like an animal and asterisk 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 his pants. Edit. Yes, it was Culver's. That was three months ago and we have not been back since. <laughs> One day around Christmas my dad was peeling potatoes straight into the garbage disposal. We were like dad no, it cannot possibly handle all that. Cue it getting clogged, and as he opened up the U in the sink, all of the water, potato peel, everything just came gushing out. Cue great potato incident of 2010. We've never let him live it down. Wait what? I thought garbage disposals can handle anything? We don't have them in Australia, so I've never seen one. Movies and TV have lied to me yet again. Garbage disposals come in varying power levels. From asterisk 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 ty blender like the commenter below said, to I'm afraid to put my hand in the sink. Most people never replace the one the house came with, if they have one, so eventually the blades get dull. <laughs> the Roddy Parley invasion. One day we saw one of them in our house. It wasn't that weird, since we saw them often where I lived. But that one had like a hundred of them following it, and it was the creepiest and most unnatural occurrence we ever had. I had something like this happen when I was like 12 at a house we were renting. I can't remember the cause, but all of this orange-headed worm started coming up from behind the sink. 
hundreds of these things over the course of days. Chances are no one in my family remembers it, because none of them can remember. I just remembered another one. My son and I stayed with my eldest aunt when my youngest aunt was dying. She had been gone all day taking care of her sister, and her sister lived in a tiny town full of dirt roads. It was pouring rain, and it took forever for her to make the drive home. She came home exhausted, and went straight to bed. About an hour later the rain got worse, and my fear of the house flooding was being realized. I'm here with my 3 year old son, who's just absolutely amazed that it's waning in the house. He's following me around as I'm trying to block it from coming in the front door. When I went to get a mop and bucket from the garage, we see the entire thing is swimming at that Winnie the Pooh movie, litter box bouncing off of cars and all. At this point I see that the garage is beginning to overflow into the kitchen, and there's nothing I can do. So I tell this happy hoppy boy that he is now allowed to go wake his nana and inform her of what's happening. He bounces away, apparently so excited he jumped up on top of her to yell it's waning in your house, directly into her face, before dragging her out of bed to see. She comes out, and I'm now standing between the flood from the front door and the one rising in the kitchen trying to stack anything I can reach out of the water. Kiddo comes bounding over, this is like a dream come true for him, he can't stop hopping and yelling and giggling. He finally bounced into the kitchen, goes sliding and gets pinned under a cupboard for half a second before I snag the shirt and rip him back out. I plopped him back on the carpet and he picked up right where he left off, just in another direction. It was at that point, likely a mix of her awful day slash exhaustion with the pure joy of the kiddo and the sudden surprise of my reflex snag slash back to business attitude, but she lost it. She cracked up so hard. She said she needed that laugh and told me just to leave what's left and go to bed that we'd clean up in the morning. Oddly enough it's one of my fonder memories. Had to pull up all the carpet and put tile down. Tons of work started the next day, but I'll still treasure it. We call it back quote the spray tan incident of back quote 09 point quote. My older sees was getting married, so my younger sister wanted to get a spray tan from this lady she met at work, a bar. So little sees invites me to get this new airbrushed spray tan, mom decides to join us, and I invited a friend along as well. Everyone looks good tan, right? We go to the lady's house, she runs the airbrush slash spray tan business in her garage. We asterisk 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 umed that, since she did this often. So she said that she would have a nice semi-professional setup. She did not, one at a time. We stripped down to our panties and got sprayed, but had to hang out naked in the open for like 15 minutes while the tan dried. To make matters worse, the lady's kids kept trying to open the door to ask their mom where the juice boxes were or something. I was mortified. When my husband and I moved into our first apartment, we had my parents over one afternoon for lunch. We lived in a not so great part of town with really thin walls. Small place, but we were proud of it. We refused to live on post. As we're about to have dessert, suddenly our quiet afternoon exploded into high decibel sounds of what can only be described as backquote sex fighting from the apartment below us. For 5 minutes, loud moans, screams, and sounds of slamming in various rooms permeated the air as we just stared anywhere but at each other. Only the woman could be heard, which made it even more bizarre. You could hear thumps from the bedroom area, to the kitchen, now the living room, directly below us seated neatly at our dining table. My dad, the most polite man on the face of this planet, just slowly chewed his cobbler. My mother, underside of a fish 100% German pale, is about the same color as Rudolph's nose. If my dad were light, I imagine he'd be the same. To make things worse, our cat would follow wherever they were on the floor and roll around, attracted to the vibrations shaking the walls. We had just gotten him some new catnip toys, and he just bat batted away at them, pupils dilated and tail poofed. A toner, we called it. My husband went into the kitchen, threw some ice in a blender, and turned it on just in time to stifle his screaming laughter. It's probably a tie. There's me getting 
stuck in a wooden high chair while goofing off at a DQ with my family when I was 10 and the fire department across the street having to take it apart to get me out. And there's my estranged aunt adopting a cat, having it euthanized, boiling the bones in her spaghetti pot, and Ari asterisk 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 embling it slash mounting it, for fun, or something, I guess. Edit, what had happened was. She was in high school, so this was sometime in the early 70s. It was for a science project or science fair. She didn't even have an interest in biology or animals or anything like that. Her mother slash my grandmother was fully supportive of the whole thing. She was an elegant military wife socialite type deal, but more than a little bit mommy dearest. My aunt went to the pound and claimed to have had the huge cat she brought home put to sleep for her, but she could have just been being her macabre self. It was a different time, so I don't know. After she skinned it, to the absolute horror of my other aunts, she used her mom's giant spaghetti pot and boiled it for days. She tormented my mother by putting the fur in her bed for weeks after, and they continued to use the pot afterward. Which, on the one hand isn't odd I suppose, since it was meat, but on the other, um, just, no. Maybe that's just me. They had a neighbor who apparently was in some scientific field, so he walked her through the steps of skinning, cleaning, and mounting correctly. She won whatever she was going for, and it was displayed on their coffee table until their boxer got a hold of it and chewed it up. The aunt in question went ballistic. I literally just spoke to me my mum to clarify details, but I had them all right. You don't really forget a story like that. The Spoon. My family took a trip to Europe summer before my freshman year of high school. On our first day in Paris, we were having lunch at an ice cafe. I wanted some spending money to get some souvenirs, so I ask my dad. He gives me an on-committal response, like dads do when their daughters ask for anything, and I have no recollection of why, but basically somehow I got challenged to drink the rest of his GL asterisk 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 of red wine in exchange for some money. He looked away, drank the entire HALF GL asterisk 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 maybe in one go. It was disgusting. We were done with the meal, and nobody had water left. I was dying. I whipped my head around and saw that my little sister was eating some ice cream and violently stole some to cure my dying taste buds. The waiter saw, brought me a giant aff spoon without saying a single word. My whole family erupts into laughter. He also put the check in front of me later. My family still brings it up at holidays. My brother was 17 or 18 and was starting his first real job. He had to wake up at like 4.30 am and got in the habit of calling off. My mom was furious, especially as he was working in the same company as her and my dad, so it made them look bad. We have a weird layout in our house where my parents' bedroom connects with mine, which connects with my brother's room. Just a door in between each. One morning, my mom and brother were screaming across my bedroom about going to work. He had decided he wasn't going to work. I woke up to the screaming. My mom, furious, ran through my room to scream at him more. She ran full force into my bed, which proceeded to slam against the wall, and then kept running. I don't remember what came of the situation other than a lot of cursing and a bruise, but goddamn, if my brother and I don't cry laughing thinking of that morning. My family used to vacation at a campground on the shores of the Chippewa Flowage in Hayward, Wisconsin. Camping, fishing, good old fashioned family fun, etc. Most nights, we would fish for a pie until well after dark, with our boat tied to one of the many floating mud bogs on the lake. One such evening, just before the night bite, my sister, who must have been about 12 at the time, had to asterisk 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 real bad. My dad was never one to miss a night of good fishing, so he wasn't about to pack it in for a bowel movement. She begged and pleaded to go in, to shore to asterisk asterisk asterisk, but he wasn't having it. Finally, when something had to give, she was forced to hang her asterisk 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 over the side of the boat and let it fly. Sploosh. Splash. Plop. At 8 years old, I couldn't contain my uncontrollable laughter, and neither could anybody else. 
We even wrote a song about it, to the tune of if you're happy, and you know it. There's a log on a bog in the middle of the chip. There's a log on a bog in the fog in the middle of the chip. There's a log on a bog and it smells a bit like dog. There's a log on a bog in the middle of the chip. My grandma was living in another country, while my grandpa went back to our native country, because he said it was too cold. The relative suspected he was having an affair. So my grandma bought a plane ticket, flew in secret and caught the grandad red-handed. Granny grabbed a kitchen knife and threw it hard at him out of rage point she missed. After that they split for good unofficially. Grandad's kids, my uncle slash aunties slash dad, practically excommunicated him, cut off from any support. He had to come out of retirement and drive a bus to earn money and lodging. He came from a poor family, while my granny had all the titles inherited from her rich parents so. Granda died lonely and poor, resented by our entire immediate families for being known for his infidelity. Moral of the story, don't betray the hand that feeds and house you. So, nice old ladies move out of the house next door and a family with two kids move in. Everything seems fine at first, the mother seems a little off but nothing unusual. Then things start getting weird. One day she invites us over for breakfasts and makes wine coolers at 10 a.m. The oldest kid starts spreading awful rumors around school, like how another kid was gonna shoot up the place. This should have been a huge red flag to us, but we shrugged it off. Well, so incident occurred in two parts. Part 1. One day around the Christmas season, my dad takes me, my sister and the two kids from next door out to the park to play. We were supposed to be home at a certain time. However, there was M asterisk 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 IVE Christmas tree lot next to the park. So we stayed an hour longer to go run around and look at all the Christmas trees. Our neighborhood was pretty close-knit at the time and we all knew each other, so an extra hour late usually wasn't a big deal. Naturally we thought nothing of this while we're on our way home. The next day I go over to the neighbor's house to see if the kids wanted to come over and play. As soon as the mother opens the door, she immediately starts yelling at me and claiming that I sexually asterisk 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 AULTED her daughter, I was 7 at the time, and started calling me a pervert. I ran back home and started crying to my mom that I was a pervert, having no real idea what that mean other than bad. When asked why I thought that, I told her the next door mother said I was. My mom was furious. However, she didn't go to her immediately. No, my mom had an idea. There was going to be a block party next day. The incident part 2. Next day, the block party has started. Everyone on our street came, bringing food for a potluck. Then, the next door mother came. My mother was staring daggers at her. As soon as the mother approached the potluck table, my mother asks, Deb, did you call my son a pervert yesterday? I don't remember too much, since I was only 7 at the time. But there was a lot of yelling and accusations thrown around. Luckily my family had good standing with the neighborhood and well. Deb wasn't exactly liked by everyone else either. Last thing I remember, Deb grabbed her husband by the arm and shouted, we are going home. They moved out about a week later, a nice Mexican family moved in about a month after that. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. I would be so grateful if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel. New videos every day.